that's were in place. Buford. Buford, you listening? Now get this. That's when the subcommittee had to reallocate the funds and then How many genders are there? I don't know. I just got here. Huh? Do you think voter ID laws are racist? I think so. Most of the motivation behind them being put into place is rooted in racism. I think voter ID laws are inherently discriminatory when you look. The, the vast majority of people who do not currently have IDs are uh, people of color. Do you have an ID? Absolutely. Can you show us? Yeah. yeah. What do you have to say to all the people that say black Americans can't get voter ID? I don't even know why they would say that. We can get the same things that every other American can get. That doesn't even make sense to me. Republicans are just trying to make it really fucking hard for minorities to vote. Why do they do that? Because they hate black people. They fucking hate black people and they're racist. The black population is like historically much more um, financially like disadvantaged. Uh, disproportionately making people who don't have IDs, which are usually people of color, have to go out and pay to vote, which is going to disencourage a lot of those people from voting. Do you have an ID? I do. Can you show us your ID? For sure. What would you say to all the people that say black Americans can't get voter ID? Seek help. So do you think voter ID laws suppress the African American vote? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Why? They might like require like a specific type of ID, like getting a... When I had to get a new passport, it was like over a hundred bucks, so that definitely also like roots out um, the lower classes like in general. Perfect. What do you have to say to all the people that say that black Americans can't get voter ID? Well, I think it's pretty stupid. Like, we are, we're in a country where all of us are majority educated and we have the resources at our hands and our disposal to easily find these things. Um, so I think anybody saying that is just dumb. Like, that's a really ignorant and stupid thing to say. Specific areas which have a high um, amount of, you know, minorities. And when you're not, when you're less educated, you're less likely to vote. You're saying the quiet part out loud, I think. And I think that that's what makes it so difficult for people of color to vote. Seek help. What do you have to say to all the people that say black Americans can't get voter ID? I say it's really a lie. It's all on, it's all on really the person. If the person really want to get their ID, they can go get it. It's nothing really stopping them. You motherfuckers racist as hell. Why the fuck wouldn't black people have that? What's the difference between, between us and you? Nothing is worse than people who are offended on behalf of other people. Critical thinking is so severely lacking today. It's even more embarrassing when the people you're offended on behalf of aren't even offended themselves. The pay to vote thing is especially funny because everywhere that passes voter ID laws, also have made IDs free. The sad thing is these young fools didn't even realise what they are saying is extremely racist. Yeah, especially that woman at the end when she said they're less educated. Like you just exposed yourself. I can't imagine talking about a different race. Like they aren't capable of doing simple everyday tasks and aren't capable of running their own lives. Yeah, facts. They're, these people are so delusional. They're out of touch with the real world and they just expose their own racism by trying to virtue signal and seem like good people. It's hilarious. <laughs> All right, the Hollywood elite criticizing the working class for not believing in white privilege is beyond parody. Let's check it out. A lot of revelation in watching your documentary. Seeing how white people could actually be confused by the idea of white privilege and why there would be some white people that believe that white privilege is non-existent. So what we're filming is a documentary on white privilege to see if it exists or if it's a fantasy that people are just making up in their heads. What do you think? I think it's something they're making up in their heads. You don't think it exists? No, I had the same privileges that the other guys had. And what, what other guys? Other guys, black, white, Hispanic. Yeah. Right. I think everybody makes their own choices. You were surprised about that? I was surprised. because really? Yes, because privilege to a lot of people is related to money. money. Mm -hmm. That's how I thought of it. Right. Right. And I read a line in a book that said, to many people, equality feels like a loss. Right. And that's the moment. That was the line. I'm very big on one line. Take right. away. Equality feels like a loss. And then I thought, what would I be willing to give up in, in the name of equality? Right. I, if I really were, if you were to say to me, hey, give me your house and everything's going to be fair and equal. <laughs> right. Sure. Of course and, I would. Sure. Of course I would. Why life? Uh... Yo, 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 disingenuous. We've got some Hollywood elites trying to lecture normal people on what privilege is. And it's so convenient that they're trying to say, oh, it's got nothing to do with wealth. That yeah, that is very convenient considering you're all multi-millionaires. And then she tried saying, oh, if she could donate her house and it would make everything fair and equal. Well, you can donate your house, probably worth millions. What's stopping you from selling it, splitting the money up and giving it to a load of kids who are underprivileged and want to go to college but can't afford it? 
nothing's stopping her from doing that. She cares so much about this problem, apparently, but she's not willing to actually take any action to help the problem. This is how I know these people are just fake and they don't actually care. All they're trying to do is stir up division. That's it. They always bring up the problems, but they never have solutions. I saw a shirt this girl was wearing. It said, girls can do anything boys can do. And I was like, when? What? <laughs> what world are you living in? That's such a dumb phrase. Girls can do anything boys can do. It's, just, it's also a dumb phrase if a guy has a shirt that says, guys can do anything girls can do. Also not true. What are you talking about? Dude, you guys, you make humans inside of your body. That's crazy. Nine months, probably the most grueling, excruciating, painful, insane, wild thing that humans do. You do it. So leave us alone. <laughs> what do you want? Leave us alone. You want to do these jobs? We can do what you do. You want to do? We don't want to do these fucking jobs. We did them for you. You don't want to do them either. You tricked us. You tricked us into doing them. Now you want them back? What's wrong with you? Thousands of years ago, we lived in caves. And you guys were like, go get the food. And we were like, there's lions outside. <laughs> and you guys were like, go get the food. Your definition is that a woman is someone who is female, you said, right? Correct. Gotcha. Is okay. a biological female. So what happens if we have maybe someone who is female, identifies as a woman, right? You know, cisgender woman, right? As you explained, as you just explained, it maybe doesn't have the ability to reproduce. Well, maybe it doesn't have those organs that you're talking about well, that are reproductive well, organs. I have answered the question. You stood up here and said trans women are women. Yes. Tell me what you mean. What is a woman? Womanhood is something that, just as Ethan explained, I cannot define because I am not but myself. you used the word. So what did you mean when you said trans women are women if you don't know what it means? Right. So here's the thing. So I do not define what a woman is because I do not identify as a woman. Womanhood is something that is an umbrella term it includes people that who... That describes what? People who identify as a woman. I identify as what? As a woman. What is that? Was to each their own. Okay. Each woman, each man, each person is going to have a different relation with their own gender identity and define it differently. Never thought that one day I'd be watching a dude with a beard arguing with another dude with a beard about being a woman. Like, this is the woman that's going to be raising your kids and you're saying a college degree isn't important? What is Not she, important like, at all. How's that going to help you raise your children? Congrats, you have a bachelor's in feminist studies. I mean, shoot, do you learn a little bit of history in that? You learn false history and bullshit and man-hating. Well, <laughs> Actually, I would argue that if your college degree is in feminist studies, that makes you barred. You should be barred from having children and families because if you birth a son, you're going to hate your son. If you have a husband, you're going to hate your husband. All these college institutions are just churning out man-hating women, basically. That's what they are. They're indoctrination factories. Believe this. 99% of my professors are probably liberal. Okay, I'm going to believe the main storyline. And I also believe in feminism. And men are terrible. And men are oppressors. Even though 60% of college graduates are women. And women don't have any opportunities. And there's male privilege. Even though I'm more educated than my male counterparts. So, hello? You don't need a college degree to raise kids. History has proven that. But for some reason, she thinks it will help. It's, it's about as useful as having bike pedals on a wheelchair that belongs to a man with no fucking legs. His idea of how women should be treated is that they effectively are a form of slave to a man. You know, Pierce, I really like you and I sometimes feel you, you fall for Andrew's little traps and it, it's really wonderful to watch because it's not the things he says. It's the way he says them, and the way he says them can get people very riled up. When I was sitting listening to your interview about women shouldn't work and be taken care of, etc., mm -hmm. it actually shook, took me back about 12 or 13 years to an interview I saw, I can't remember, I think it was on ITV, with the late Christopher Hitchens. You probably knew him. I did. I, I did not know Christopher Hitchens. Uh, he, I, was, I, was, I think mm -hmm. he died way before I became relevant. But he was sitting there with this female journalist, and he's saying, his exact words were, Oh, I don't want Mrs. Hitchens to be coarsened in the labor market. Why would I want my women coarsened in the labor market? No, if she's with me, she can work if she wants, but she doesn't have to. Now, he was not labeled the world's biggest misogynist. He was actually hailed as an intellectual this time. I read all of his books. He said exactly the same thing Andrew said. Exactly the same thing with different intonations and different tones. And you probably knew him. You didn't attack him back then for saying that, did you? But most men are pretty hopeless when newborn bundles arrive. And they're, they're so... I'm incredibly impressed by how women appear to know what to do and then they think well I'll go off and do extra work and make some money and they justify it in that way. Christopher I've heard you say this. Yeah, um, and well, now I'm saying you're hearing me say it again. No, but my point would be that I think after the 70s that is actually not true. That may have been true 
but I don't think that is true, that men are so less capable of dealing with children and that it's better that they go off, go off and earn money. You know, maybe the mother well, could go and earn some money. Did no, that never occur to you? I'm not having you? any woman of mine go to work. <laughs> you know you're going to no, get into trouble need, if you no, go down there. Need, no, I won't, no, they don't need to work. They can, they can if they like, but they don't have to. You are joking, aren't No, you? I'm not. <laughs> no, I would expect, oh, to, tell take, me I would expect to take care of them. They work if you want, but you don't have to. You are the commander's son, aren't yeah, you? Yes. Am, yes. You, you really mean that? Sure. You don't think women should go and work? Yeah, I said they, they're welcome to do that. I'm thrilled if they want to. But if they don't want to, they don't have to. It's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's just absolutely wrong. Please, a huge thank you to the sexist but charming Christopher Hitchens. Thank you. So if you want to offend a feminist, all you need to do is tell them you're going to give your wife the freedom to do what she wants and that triggers them. That just proves they don't have women's best interest at heart. And he's 100% right in what he says. Women are way better at looking after kids than men. It comes so natural to them. So it makes sense, doesn't it? If you need extra money, the man can go and do some overtime. Imagine sending your wife who's just had a baby, sending her to work because you need extra money. It doesn't even feel right, does it? If she wants to do it, then she can do it. She's free to do that. But I think it's better that she stays home and looks after the kids and nurtures the kids and gives them the love and affection that they need so she can maintain the home while the man goes and works. It makes sense. But of course, no, as a feminist, yeah, they hate that. They hate anything that makes logical sense, don't they? So you, if you, they say you have to do 50 push-ups to enter and you can't do 50 push-ups, how are, how are you oppressed? It's not, not, it's not yeah. about that, but okay, so, that, so that's then, not so as simple to, so, as it so, is. So, so answer. So yeah. then you're not oppressed, you just can't pass the no, test. No, but if all so, I've been wait, doing wait, all wait, my wait, life wait, is yes, being at yes. home because the only thing that I can that, do is be true. at home. The, no, name, name, no. One, name one housewife in the media. Name one. Which, which, one which housewife in the media. I'm talking about then. I'm talking no, no, about... Society tells us to be housewives. Name one in the media. Name one. One. one, um, how one, did it start? One, 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 because one, society one. wants no, us back <laughs> into the into the house. <laughs> I don't understand. No, 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 you don't want to be like I, it, who's in, it who's in, propaganda. The who's in the, and, and I could give you I could give you I know a lot of housewives. <laughs> and they're happy. Yeah. So, <laughs> Kim Kardashian, so, Cardi yeah, 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 in the media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also good. 75 years. That's how much time you get if you're lucky. 75 years, 75 winters, 75 springtimes, 75 summers, and 75 autumns. When you look at it like that, it's not a lot of time, is it? Don't waste them. Get your head out of the rat race and forget about the superficial things that preoccupy your existence and get back to what's important now. Right now, this very second. And I'm not saying drop everything and let the world come to a grinding halt. I'm saying that you can become a seeker. You can be loving more. You can be taking some chances. You can be living more. You can be spending more time with your family. You can be getting in touch with the part of you that lives instead of fears, the part of you that loves instead of hates.